Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial for the US edition. In this tutorial about shear wall deflection, I will describe the difference between using the nonlinear four term deflection equation from SpeedWiz figure C4.3.2 1 and the option of using the simplified linear three term approximation from SpeedWiz 4.3.2. I will also talk about why this three-term equation is useful and show how to use it. Inside the Shearwald software, there is an option to use either the three-term deflection equation or the four-term deflection equation. The three-term deflection equation has been adapted from the American Wood Council Special Design Provision for Wind and Seismic Standard, commonly known as PIDWIS, and is essentially a linearization of the four-term deflection equation. These graphs represent the load displacement curve for both equations for a wood sheathed shear wall. By default, the three term deflection equation is selected, but you can toggle between the two equations in the settings design tab. The three term equation is a simplification of the four term deflection equation, where the shear and null slip components of the four term equation are combined into one shear component. This equation makes it necessary to calculate an apparent shear wall shear stiffness, GA, which is dependent on the shear capacity of the shear wall, the shear through thickness of the panel, and the nail slip associated with the nails on the wall. The three term deflection equation approximates the shear and nail slip component when a shear wall is loaded to 100% of its shear resistance. The nail slip component in the four term deflection equation makes the equation nonlinear. But if you simplify the equation to the three-term deflection equation, it becomes linear. This speed width figure illustrates the difference between the three-term and the four-term deflection equations. Since deflections are designed using strength level load, which is approximately 1.4 ASD, the deflection following the three-term and four-term equations will be the same when calculated at 100% ASD capacity. It also shows that for forces lower than the design capacity, the three term will approximate a higher deflection than the more accurate nonlinear calculation. Why is linearizing the deflection equation useful anyway, especially from a software perspective? Let's take a look at a single 12 feet shear resisting segment with structural sheathing on the exterior side of the wall and gypsum wallboard on the interior surface of the wall. This slide compares the deflection results using the four-term and three-term deflection equations. Notice that for the four-term equation, no load is distributed to the gypsum wallboard on the interior side. Why is this? Well, the software is programmed to equalize the deflection between the exterior and interior sheathing materials. Out of the four terms of the equation, the only terms that could be different between the interior side and exterior side are the shear and null slip components. Sometimes it is impossible to converge on a solution, and the program bounces back and forth between assigning all the shear force to the interior side or the exterior side. Also, the slip term for gypsum is independent of the amount of force, while the slip term for wood sheathing does depend on the force. As a result, it is not possible to equalize the flexion between the wood sheathing and gypsum, so all the load is distributed to the stiffer wood sheathing. So, using the three-term equation avoids this issue, and force will be distributed to both sides of the wall. 